Hello everyone, in today's video I will be sharing with you each and every one of my pairs of high heels, including the ones I wear to work, to play, during the summer, and during the winter, and I'll be doing a separate video for my boots collection. The first pair of shoes I'm going to show you are from Aquatalia, one of my favorite all-season brands. A lot of their shoes are waterproof. These little wedges are really pretty pale pink, and they have been my most worn shoe this summer. The second pair is my favorite pair of work shoes. These are just a classic high heel from LK Bennett, a really great investment. I highly recommend patent leather as a finish for shoes. It seems to really keep them wearable for a long time. The second pair is a recent investment of mine. These are my first pair of Prada heels. I love the little platform on them, the really nice biscotti nude shade. The little lettering underneath is a nice luxury touch and they, so far they've been very comfortable, very wearable and go with pretty much everything which is why I'm obsessed with high heel nude shoes and have quite a large collection of them as you'll see in this video. The second pair is the previous pair that I wore a lot. These are from Kohan. They're quite beaten up now but I wear them every day still. The third pair, also nude but slightly more taupey, is from Todd's. I bought these when I first started working so they are quite scuffed now but still very comfy. Especially for being about five years old, they're still in good condition and I really like the little buckles on the end. Next, another nude pair, but these are slingbacks, one of my favorite styles. I purchased these in Hong Kong when I was interning over there, but they are actually from Zara, one of my favorite places to get high-end looking shoes at a budget price. The next pair is from Geox, which is a great place to look for really comfortable, work-appropriate shoes. So these are also a slingback in a really unusual, kind of 60s looking color combination of gray and black with a little bit of a peep toe, which is perfect for a little peak of skin during the summer at work. The next shoes are also a peep toe shoe, but they're a little bit lower and a little bit more of a stiletto shape. These are from Kohan. Again, the patent leather has lasted me really well. Next up, I have a pair of Russell and Bromleys that I got at a deep clearance in London, and I really like the crocodile print on these. I think they're a little bit different. They're quite pointy, but still quite easy to walk in. These are the best dollar for dollar shoes I ever bought because they were so inexpensive in the first place and I've worn them to death. They're from the 424 line at Lord & Taylor. One of the most underrated higher end shoe designers in my opinion is Via Spiga because the quality is just so outstanding. These are pony hair, leopard print, block heel pumps, quite the mouthful, and they are so comfortable. They look brand new despite being worn to death even in the winter. And I just love this style of shoe. You can see it popping up again and again in this collection. The most comfy, versatile type of shoe in my opinion is a block heel and it's the most inexpensive to maintain too. This next pair is from Tory Burch. I'm not as crazy for the logo as I used to be, but this cocky shade is one that I highly recommend because it goes with so much and yet is a little bit unexpected. These next shoes are from Sam Edelman. They're really pretty soft suede. I picked them up at Nordstrom Rack. I love this Dorsey shape. I think it's really effortlessly sexy, a little bit ladylike, and very classic. The next ones are also Tory Burch, but much smaller logo, which I like. Very Chanel-esque, but not too much because it's that very classic Tory Burch wedge, which makes them a little bit more casual, which I like. And then next up, we have some Cole Hans from the outlet, which I shamefully have never worn. The snake skin, in my opinion, is really hard to pair with an outfit because you need something really basic that won't clash with it. And then the next pair I'm a little bit disappointed in, these are from Todd's, but from the outlet. And I've not worn them that much at all, but they already look so scuffed. I think the suede is especially soft on those. And then I have some really old Tory Burch wedges. Again, paint and leather has done me so well with these shoes. I've worn them again and again, and they still look pretty good for shoes, which you have to remember go on the floor, so they're never going to stay perfect. After that, I have some really nice Vince, very current little mules. I love this style. It's so comfortable. It's a little bit edgy, but still pretty classic, especially since I picked a nude tone again. These were a nice find from Aldo. I think they're really unusual 
unusual looking, very kind of femme fatale, but they're ultimately just a really simple high heel, really comfortable, a little bit damaged now, but I don't mind too much because they were really affordable to begin with. You might notice a theme that I really like English shoe designers. These ones are from LK Bennett in their sale. I really like the really subtle gladiator look. They're really comfortable. I like the style of heel a lot. Um, the brown is also really easily wearable. However, the braiding does dig in a little bit on these shoes. If you want sandals that have a little bit of a heel but don't feel like one, I can walk for hours in these. They're from Clark's. I have these in every color available. I love this style of sandals. Sandal, it feels like walking on air and I have a pair every summer. The next pair is from Kate Spade, one of my favorite whimsical shoe designers. I love the little black tip heel on these as well as the unexpected silver. And then the next pair, again from Kate Spade, is a faux stingray effect that has the prettiest sparkle. Both of these shoes are easily wearable from office to nighttime and I really love that for the holiday season when you may not have time to change after work. My newest splurge, of course, has been these Valentino Rock Studs. I really didn't get the hype. I thought these were so overdone until I got a pair, and I realized that they are the most comfy stilettos that I own, pretty much. Recent little steal that I found was at the Zara sale. These were $30. I think they scream John Vito Rossi. I love the cutout detailing. They are a little bit unstable, but overall still pretty comfortable and they are the perfect high red heel, which every girl has to have. My next shoes were a total impulse buy. These were my first Louboutins. Terrible decision. They are so uncomfortable, but I still love the way they look. They really are more wearable art than shoes. Since Louboutins are so famous, I decided to give them a second chance and bought these studded ones. I still adore the way these look, but the undersole has not lasted at all. It's gone really peely and ugly looking, and they only have room for about four of my toes, so I don't wear them very often. The next pair you would think would be even more uncomfortable. They're from Kurt Geiger, really affordable, still quite high-end shoes, perfect for the holidays, but believe it or not, they're actually super comfortable. They look really unstable, but it's more of an optical effect than anything else, and they have that same Dorsey style that I'm in love with. These are probably some of my all-time favorite shoes. They're from Badgley Mishka. They're my Cinderella shoes. I love the dual chrome effect, and I think they still look really beautiful despite having been worn for several holiday seasons. The fabric on them has lasted really well. These are from Dune. They're the perfect strappy nude high heel. I had love that I found a Stuart Weitzman dupe for a really affordable price point. The quality on these has been great. I've worn them a lot this summer. I purchased them about three or four months ago and have worn them many times. These are a reminder that you can find shoes for very cheap that look quite pricey. These are beautiful, really shiny fabric that is a total dupe for Jimmy Choo's, but it was purchased at Nordstrom Rack and is pretty much a no brand pair of shoes shoes. These next ones are a reminder to myself that I should shop my own shoe collection. They're from Coach and I've hardly worn them, perhaps because as you can see my feet wobble in them a little bit, but they're still a really pretty shoe. These black high heels are from Max Mara. I purchased them at TK Maxx. They were still quite pricey though, but they were worth it because they're very comfortable. Somehow the strap around the ankle really keeps them in place really well so they don't rub anywhere and are easy to walk in. These are from Jimmy Choo. I purchased them at the holiday sale last year. I do think they're a little bit 80s for my taste. I haven't worn them a lot. I do love the duochrome of them. They have a really pretty finish. And these next ones are Jimmy Choo as well. I believe all the next ones you're going to see are all Jimmy Choo. I had a Jimmy Choo phase. I love these nude ones. They're very Cleopatra. They're quite comfortable, but the quality of the leather has gone a bit flaky um, in that the scaled effect is peeling off a little bit. Same here again. These shoes are absolutely gorgeous. I love the way these look. I can dance in them all night. So for Jimmy Choo's, that's really great. But some of the little sequins have popped off, which is too bad, but they're still some of my absolute favorite because they have that Disney princess effect that I love. And that is it for my shoe collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and come back and check in for my boot collection, which will be coming up in the fall. And also, wink wink, make sure you check your subscription boxes this weekend because I will be putting up a very exciting announcement.